NMR can only be used on nuclei that have an odd mass number, such as hydrogen-1, carbon-13 and fluorine-19, since these nuclei have the property known as spin. Due to their spin, they create a small magnetic field with a magnetic moment. NMR works by applying a strong external magnetic field, causing any nuclei with a spin spate and subsequent magnetic moment to align with the magnetic field. The sample is then exposed to bursts of radio waves of the right frequency, causing the nuclei to flip. Then once the nuclei flips back, it releases the energy it took to flip it, which can then be measured. The raw data gets further transformed and we are left with a NMR spectrum. When interpreting a C NMR spectrum, we need to consider two things. One, the chemical shift or the location of the peak in the spectrum. The chemical shift is inversely proportional to the distance between the proton and any electronegative elements. More simply put, protons that are closer to any electronegative elements are more chemically shifted to the left. Second is integration or the height of the peak in the spectrum. The protons that share the exact same distance to electronegative elements will therefore also share the location on the spectrum and their peaks will therefore be added to each other. Let's solidify all of this with an example. So here you have a CNMR spectrum of propane. Take a moment to check if you can use the chemical shift and integration to figure out which peak is which. Hint, consider the chemical environment of these different carbons carefully. So there are three carbons but only two peaks. This is because the carbons on both ends share an identical chemical environment, meaning that they will be equally chemically shifted and added to each other. If you, like me, are more used to HNMR spectroscopy, you are probably wondering why it is not the middle carbon that is the most shifted. Well, in carbon-13 NMR spectroscopy, we need to use another system unless a clearly more electronegative element is present. We can score each carbon based on how many carbons its neighboring carbons are attached to. Sorry if that was a bit confusing. So in this case, the carbons at the end are both attached to a secondary carbon, meaning a carbon attached to two other carbons. Therefore, we give both of them a score of two. The carbon in the middle is attached to two primary carbons, meaning that they are attached to only one carbon. This makes the score of the middle carbon 1 plus 1, which is also 2. This is why the two signals are so close together, but the carbons at the end will be slightly more chemically shifted. Now, if you want to know how a NMR device actually works in practice, click this video.